Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming the Spring Has Sprung book tag. I haven't been tagged in this but I saw Kaz's video from Cats and Camera and I just thought this was a really fun tag and I wanted to do it so I'm gonna do it. Before I start with the tag I would like to show off my new t-shirt which I didn't know existed and I'm so happy because it's got my YouTube slogan on so I don't know if you can see that but yeah I it's from Tea Turtle. I love Tea Turtle shirts. They do so many cute cat shirts and I own far too many of them now. They do loads of great book shirts as well. But um, <laughs> I saw this one and I could not buy it because it's literally what I say at the start of all of my YouTube videos. But yeah, I'm very happy to own this and I will probably wear it a lot in these videos. Um, yes, yeah, so anyway, on with the tag. So the first prompt is flowers. All the flowers we remember are blooming again. Pick a retelling that is a fresh take on the original story. And for this I have picked Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Doe. I absolutely love this book. I gave it four stars. It is a fantasy story and it is an Asian retelling of the Evil Queen story from Snow White. This actually has very little to do with that story, um, which is why I picked it for this prompt because I think it is a lot more original than that description implies. But it's essentially about um, Shi Feng, who is a girl, she gets raised by her aunt and she gets told that she's destined for great things. So she essentially travels to the Emperor's uh, palace and starts as like a handmaiden to the Empress and she essentially wants to eventually become the Empress herself. It's a really good fantasy story, I absolutely loved it, um, really strong characters and it's got a great take on the Evil Queen story. I haven't read the sequel yet, which is more sounds slightly more Snow Whitey, but... Next prompt is Cadbury Mini Eggs, which it says is obviously the superior spring sweet of choice. I think I agree with that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of cream eggs, so I will agree that mini eggs are the best. Anyway, the point is to um, pick a book that is sweet. So I've picked Meet Cute, which is an anthology. And this is uh, uh, all about two people meeting in cute ways. Uh, it's contemporary romance short stories. And I really liked it. I read this last spring, last February. Not all the stories are hits. I think overall it was about 3.5 for me for the whole anthology. But it's got some really, really good ones in there. The one I can remember is um, Oomph, which I think is by Emery Lord. And that was just like, I can remember every detail of that story even a year later because it was just so good. But yeah, all of that stuff. Um, it's so sweet. It's really cute. Even if you don't normally like contemporary romance things, this has got enough interesting stories with like unique little quirks in them. To keep you invested and I, yeah I really enjoyed it. The next prompt is allergies. Seasonal allergies often make your eyes water. Pick a book that has made you cry. This was a struggle for me. I think it's been a long long time since I cried at a book so <laughs> I'm a little, I don't know if I'm embarrassed to admit this but I've picked The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Stephanie Meyer gets so much flack and I do understand why I'm not going to stop talking about Twilight here. The Host is a sci-fi story about an alien who, um, an alien species who invades, they basically take over the brains of people and live as hosts within them and they've done this to several planets and then they decide to do it to Earth and the main character takes over the brain of this teenage girl and then she gets kidnapped by the kind of colony that the teenage girl was living in. She gets kidnapped by the teenage girl's boyfriend and it's basically about her kind of, she's kind of falling in love with the guy who her human host was in love with and she's also kind of falling in love with a different guy and the human host is alive within her and is talking to her and there's the human host's little brother and all these different factors. I think it's a really really interesting story about human morality and kind of what it means to be compassionate. This is a whopper of a book. 
I actually, I haven't read this for years and years, but it made me cry three times, which is incredible. I used to never ever cry at anything. And then I started crying at loads of things. And even now, what gets me crying is other people's reactions, like other characters' reactions to bad things that happen, not necessarily the bad things themselves. So if a character dies, it's not the character's death, it's the ill cry character crying over them that will make me cry. But this has got several kind of elements of that. And yeah, it's the only book I can remember in recent memory. Even then, this is from talking like seven years ago now that I read this, but um, it's the only book I can remember that making me cry. The next prompt is spring cleaning. Out with the old and in with the new. Pick a book to unhaul. For this, I'm going to pick The Girl Who Came Back by Kerry Wilkinson. I just read this book. It's a pretty enjoyable thriller. I think I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. But I've read it now. It wasn't good enough that I'm ever going to reread it and it's just going to take up space so I am going to unhaul this one. I've got a bunch of books that I need to see if I can donate to a library and work out how to do that but if not they'll be going to charity shops. So the next prompt is spring break. It's the perfect time for an adventure. Pick a book involving a road trip. I have read road trip books but I don't remember them very well so I've picked one I haven't read and that is Two Way Street by Lauren Barnhold. So this is about um a teenage couple and they were supposedly really in love and they were going to the same college so they planned this road trip to go to orientation together and then right before this road trip the guy breaks up with the girl however it's too late for them to get to orientation any other way so they go on this road trip together but it turns out that he didn't break up with her because he wanted to there's some other reason and they're still in love with each other I heard about this book years and years ago and I still haven't read it, but I really do want to read it. It sounds like a completely contrived premise, but it also sounds like it might be really cute and the kind of ridiculous contemporary that I enjoy. Um, I might read it soon actually, it's getting a bit sunnier, I'm getting a bit more in my contemporary mood, so I might actually pick it up this year. The next prompt is mating season, it's the time of the year where animals make babies, pick a book with some smutty delights. I don't read a lot of smut. I don't read a lot of romance, which is why I don't get a lot of um, smut in my books, but I had to pick Odd One Out by Nick Stone. I read this January, maybe? February? God, I don't even remember which month I read it in, but I read it really recently. Gave it five out of five stars. Absolutely loved it. This is about um, our main guy and he is in love with his best friend who is a lesbian and then a new girl comes to town and we don't know what her orientation is but Jupiter who's a lesbian is in love with her uh Coop is it Coop or is it Courtney the guy is in love with the new girl as well and the new girl kind of infiltrates their very very close friendship and it becomes like a three-way friendship slash romance thing I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'm not going to say who the smutty scene is between because that would be a spoiler. But there was a fantastic smutty scene in this. I really enjoyed it. It's a really good book and yeah, just I love it. Go read it now. The next prompt is rainbows. I just feel like spring is made of freaking rainbows. Pick a book with an LGBTQ plus character. I've actually already mentioned two, so Meet Cute has a lot of queer relationships in it. Um, Odd One Out has a lot of queer things going on in it. But for this I'm going to bring up another one because I do like my queer books. And that is Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertelli. I'm sure everyone knows what this is about. This is about Simon who is gay, he's not out of his school and he's emailing this guy who goes to his school but he doesn't know who he is and he's got like an internet relationship going on with this guy. It is pure fluff. I love it. I read it also recently and I think I gave it four, 4.5 stars out of five. Um, a really quick, easy spring read, really cute queer story, just all round goodness. I'm sure you've read it or if you haven't read it, you've probably heard of it and decided not to read it. But yeah, it's a really, really good book. The next prompt is Spring Awakening which is someone's favourite musical even though it has loads of dysfunctional characters so pick a book with dysfunctional characters I had to go with If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio I read this again recently, I'm talking about a lot of books I read recently but this is a 
thriller and it is about um, a group of teenagers who attended a school specifically it's an acting school to study Shakespeare and they're very small classes and they are like a group of friends and one of them dies and our main character has been sent to prison for killing the person who died but the detective who sent him to prison never thought he ever did it and it, the main character's just been released and the detective is retired and he asks the main character to tell him what really happened all those years ago just for his own personal curiosity he's not going to do anything with it in terms of the law so the main character narrates the story he's called Oliver um and this is just full of really dysfunctional people they're all been raised on Shakespeare so they all act in very peculiar ways because they're just used to their own social circle it's a really really good book I loved it I gave it five out of five stars it's definitely gonna be one of my favorite books of the year and yeah um, it's the perfect example of dysfunctional but lovable characters and the final prompt is in like a lion out like a lamb pick a book that didn't get better as it progressed and I've got to go with The Girl Who Lied by Sue Fulton. This I read very recently and I just talked about it so I'm not going to go into huge detail. But this was supposedly a thriller. It is not a thriller. It is a kind of soap opera contemporary story. Um, about a woman who returns to her hometown and there's a mystery going on. But it's not a thriller mystery. It's just kind of a domestic mystery. And yeah, this... <laughs> It was a real struggle for me to get through. It's not very long. I skim read about 50 pages from it and it just didn't get any better. I was hoping it would and it didn't. And yeah, it was a very disappointing read. Final thing is fun in the sun. Uh, tag some friends. So none of these people are obligated to do it. Um, but I'm going to tag Daniela from Daniela in Prague. I'm going to tag the Happy Booktuber. I'm going to tag Sasha from Well Read and Half Dead. And I'm also going to tag blue from blue sapphire reads if i didn't tag you and you want to do it go ahead and do it i'm happy to tag literally anyone um i'm always looking to kind of find the people it's okay to tag um if you don't want to do it and i've tagged you that's fine as well i just yeah i think i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up it helps me out massively let me know what your favorite spring candy is because i've been fixating on that and <laughs> I don't know why but I can't really think of any spring candies apart from mini eggs and cream eggs so yeah if you can think of any others let me know um thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time